Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Um, you may have noticed in my discussion section on my YouTube channel that uh, I said, hey, congratulations, you're done with the Greek modes. But then, of course, the way things always work, there is one a very, very important aspect, and this is a very practical thing uh, for both composition and um, for improvisation when you need to know what scale to play where, what key you're in, and what the root is, okay? Um, so today we're going to discuss something called mixing modes and something called uh, indicators. In other words, sometimes you could see from just two chord movements, two chords, uh, exactly what mode you're in in that moment. And I'm going to give you, it's a, it's a great tool, it's a handy tool, as long as you know your all important uh, chord family template. All right, this is so important you can't imagine, and today we're going to see even further how important it is in order to figure out where you are and what you're doing. I have one permanently plastered in, in my brain, so I always access it. All right, so um, you guys obviously know that I'm a, I'm a big Beatles fan. I love the, I love the band. I love the music. Um, but it's, that's not the only reason that I bring them up in a lot of these music theory videos. But I've always, over the years, um, whenever I needed to like demonstrate a theory uh, concept, uh, probably I have, of all the bands in the world, I have the widest, biggest repertoire of Beatles songs compared to any other band, like, you know, Zeppelin or something like that. I know a couple of songs or Hendrix or whatever. Uh, but the Beatles, I know a good deal, like right off the top of my head. So we're going to discuss um, mixing modes first, and then we'll talk about indicators. Now, what is mixing modes? All right, first of all, the idea is you keep the same root chord. Let's say it's D major. Now, I, you, have to go, you have to understand all the modes for you to understand you know, how I'm progressing here. So if you need to go back and look at those videos, please do. You'll understand a lot more. Oh, and by the way, side note, Happy Thanksgiving, you guys, uh, for you American guys, and uh, soon to come Canadian Thanksgiving, which I found out is in October and not November. Because I wish James in, in early, uh, James Corbett in early uh, Thanksgiving uh, um, message, and he said, well, it's not till October. Yeah, I felt like an idiot. Okay, so the idea of mixing mode is that you keep the same root. Now, I also told you that you can eliminate immediately three modes from your analysis. Why? Because they cannot hold a root well, okay? So what this means is that you only have a choice from the minor modes, you have a choice of Aeolian and Dorian that are likely roots. Then uh, from the major modes, you have a choice between the first step mode, Ionian, and the fifth step mode, Mixolydian. Okay, so in other words, if you're in a major key and you know a lot of major chords are rolling around there, but there's one you know, that shows up that's not one of the three major chords of a key, um, it could be that what's going on is mixing modes. Now, there's another um, reason that a ma especially a major chord will show up where it doesn't belong in the key, and that's a, uh, from a much deeper music theory uh, after we get, it came out of the blues actually, and the blues is going to be the third level of music theory we touch on. We're still on the first. Uh, the blues we have to do last, as much as, you know, you think of the blues as like... You think of like, well, I could just play my pentatonic scale, that's the blues. Um, yes and no. I mean, I always tell my students the blues is at one and the same time the most sophisticated form and the simplest form to deal with. Yes, you could deal with the blues very simply. You take someone like B.B. King, who didn't have a hell of a lot of music theory, and he plays it direct, man. He plays you the blues. But then you get, uh, as far as jazz blues, which can be way complex. If you want to hear an example of that, I'm kind of wasting your time here. But here's a jazz blues. I'm going to do it in uh, B flat. So... Uh, So you can see from all those changes that uh, we got something complicated harmonically going on. The beauty of the blues is, 
I'm in B flat uh, major, if you want to call it that. I don't believe in keys the way they set them. But if I'm B flat rooted in the blues, I could play, believe it or not, my B flat minor pentatonic will work throughout all those changes as a global scale. However, there are a bunch of European chord movements in there as well that the, when you think of European chord movement, you think more of jazz because jazz is an amalgam of blues uh, music theory and um, European music theory. I always consider it ironic that uh, someone like Wynton Marsalis is such a snob about pop music and rock music and yet he completely, there's barely an element of blues in so much of his music. And in fact, he's playing these classical pieces to show off, like, oh, I know classical. But, you know, he's basically betraying the blues altogether when he does that. That's just my opinion. I don't like snobs. I really have a hard time with that. All right. Anyway, let's get back to the uh, uh, meat and potatoes here. All right. So the first uh, example, did I clearly explain what mixing modes is then? Yeah, you keep the same root. Uh, which is D in the first case we're going to do. Uh, we're going to um, we're going to do Paul McCartney's song. And it's definitely Paul's song. Um, uh, the night before. This is off the Help record. I found two examples off the Help record uh, by the Beatles that demonstrate uh, keeping the same root chord but changing modes while you're doing it. Now. What we're going to do first is we're going to stay major, major. In other words, we're going to go between two different modes. And as I said, that would have to be the Ionian and Mixolydian modes. The mode built on the first step of some key and the mode built on the fifth step of some key. All right. Uh, now, what we have for the night before, and I'm just going to do the basic first uh, bunch of chords for it, uh, for the verse. We have a D. <laughs> Definitely, 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 we are mixing together Mixolydian and Ionian, okay? Now, how does this work? Well, luckily I have my whiteboard here. So we have our, we have our chord family template up top, and if you notice, I've got the key of D on the, on the first line and the key of G on the second line. Now, we can find a D chord in the key of G over here. So that's Mixolydian. That means we're playing a D root, but notes of the G scale and chords of the G scale. Here we have a D root, but we're playing notes and chords of a D major scale. So now if we look at the chords, we have D, C, G, A. Well, look at this. D, C, G, whoops, A minor. But in the key of D, we have A major. So we can say that at first, we're playing Mixolydian modes D, C, G. And then for a moment, we jump for the A chord. We're jumping to the Ionian mode, which is D major, if that's the way you want to look at it. OK, that's simple. I hope it makes sense. We drew, a, we drew from three chords of the key of G, keeping our D root. Then we drew one chord from the key of D itself, keeping our D root, but uh, drawing the A chord from it. So basically, um, we're using the five chord as a one, all right, in the sense that it's, it's our tonic, it's what we go home to. Then we use our one chord as what would be a four. Now think about this, D, E, F sharp, G, one, two, three, four steps up. So if this becomes one, G becomes four, C, all right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven becomes a flat seven. Why flat seven? Because in the key of D itself, where we root on D officially, there's a, um, a C sharp and not a C. Uh, that's, that C chord is a big giveaway and has to do with indicators, and it's something I mentioned uh, you know, at the introduction of this, and we will get into that. That simple. Now we're going to take a look at, you've got to hide your level way, and we're dealing with uh, different keys here. Let me get rid of these bad boys. And did I keep my pen around? No, I didn't. Now I have to go looking for it. All right, maybe I won't. I don't want to pause this one. I'm using the Zoom tonight. I figured out a way I can monitor my video by right behind my Zoom as a mirror so I could see if I'm you know, keeping this off or on screen. Um, all right, so 
Uh, geez, maybe we do actually need the pen. pen. All right, so in the case of uh, you got to hide your love away, we're dealing with the keys of uh, G and the key of C. Now, you may ask yourself, how do I know? How, how did I know that I'm dealing with these two keys? Again, certain chord movements indicate uh, certain steps, all right? We'll get to that, and you'll find this will help you immensely for figuring out what uh, mode you're in, what key you're in. Both important things to know. So real quick, I'm going to write down the key of G. Well, this blue pen isn't good at all. Okay, and I'm going to write the key of C. And as usual, uh, we don't have to worry about the diminished chord. I already proved substantially enough that that chord is actually a piece of the uh, five chord of a key. If you don't understand what I mean, go back, look. All right, so if you can see these, let's see if I'll bring it up closer. We have the key of C on the first line below the template, and then, I mean the key of G on the first line below the template, and then the key of C on the first line below the template. Now, the chords you've got to hide your love away are G, D, F add 9, G, C, F, C. All right, that's enough for our analysis. Um, I'm going to take it a little bit further when we go before the chord before the chorus. But, um, so we have G, the key of G. We have a G, a D, all right? Now, if we look on here, we can see in the key of G, we do indeed have a D chord, whereas in the key of C, we have a D minor chord, okay? So that means we're still technically in the key of G for the first two chords, and that means we're doing G Ionian, the G major scale. When that F add nine, now one thing I wanna tell you about the mathematics after each chord when you're doing this kind of analysis, the best thing to do is just get rid of the mathematics. All right, just look at each chord as either a major, a minor, or a seventh. Um, F add nine is, just think of it as F major and you'll be doing fine. Okay, so uh, speaking of F, uh, we go G, D, F. Now if I look in the key of uh, G, the F is an F sharp diminished, so that's not an F, obviously enough, but if we go to the key of C, the four chord is indeed F. So we're mixing the two modes together. Now, what does this mean? I generally find Beatles songs are not the greatest songs to like do jams on. Tom Petty, people like that are much better, people that do kind of modal music, but the Beatles are so sophisticated, really, that um, it's almost like playing jazz to improvise through, and somehow it doesn't feel appropriate um, to do a long, lengthy improv over. Certain songs are good, like say uh, the verse section to While My Guitar Gently Weeps, that's a jammer. Uh, Come Together is a jammer. There are a few songs are, but you don't want to take a song like uh, Because off the Abbey Road record and, and try to jam on that. You'll go nuts, okay? All right, so anyway, here we are. We've got these two keys, the key of G and the key of C. We barred an F from the key of C, so we have G, D, F, G, C, F again. Now, what do you do when improvising when you bump into this? And of course, you know, again, the Beatles aren't good jam music, but this mixing of modes happens in all sorts of compositions. Um, uh, let me give you an example, like uh, Jimi Hendrix's uh, uh, Little Wing. The chords we have for Little Wing, we got the same situation here. We have uh, E minor. That's the same uh, situation we have in Jimmy's song that we do in John Lennon's song. 
Uh, I'm going to recite the chords, and you'll notice that 99% of all the chords of the song are in the key of G. Now, you might say it's a minor, like the key of E minor rather than the key of G major. For all intents and purposes, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you could root on the G chord as easily as you could root on the E minor chord. Uh, let me see. Uh, and oddly enough, the song ends on a D chord, at least when we jam on it. I forget what Jimmy ends on, but uh, a lot of guys leave that D chord there, and it's a five chord, so it's just hanging, all right? Uh, that's just an effect. Anyway, if I recite the chords, we have E minor right there, G, A minor, E minor, B minor, A minor, C, G, F, where's an F? There's an F sharp. Oh, I have to go to the key of C for the F. And then C and D. So there's just one moment of mixing modes in the Jimi Hendrix. Now, what do you do in that situation? This is why it's important to know both the root chord and what key you're in at a given moment. So in the case of Jimi, we're going to assume a G major, even though it's kind of E minor. When I talk about... Um, uh, special relative relationship and a key. Uh, e minor is kind of G major's little sister and it's very easy to do a verse like if you're a composer write a verse in G and a chorus in E minor. It's very it's an old composer's trip, trick anyway. You want to go from major to minor to add a little you know uh, 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 a different color to the sound. Okay so what do you do in the case of this F? Well it's very simple. We know, we found out that F was extracted from the key of C. So for the Jimmy song, all throughout all those chords, you play a G major scale, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, all the way through, you're fine. As soon as you hit that F, you have to revert to the C major scale. Now the good news is this, the difference between the C major scale and the G major scale is simply one note. And this is why it's good to really think about the keys and look at the circle of fifths and know the neighboring keys, how close they are to each other. Uh, the key of G has an F sharp, the key of C has an F. That's the only different note between the two keys. Now, uh, Jimmy and a lot of other guys, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan when he did it, just stayed with the E minor pentatonic, which is the same, by the way, as the G major pentatonic. I'll get to that when we get to pentatonic theory. Uh, pentatonic theory is easy, but we have to, in order to fully get a rich understanding of pentatonic theory, you do have to understand the principles of the more sophisticated stuff. But think of a pentatonic as a shorthand. It eliminates the need for modes. In other words, this. We have the problem of F sharp or F while we're playing our scale. If I play a G major pentatonic, I got G, A, B, D, E. Well, guess what? There is no F in that scale, so I don't have to worry. This is why guitar players love pentatonic scales, and uh, you know they're notoriously known for not knowing music theory well, and you can't blame them. The guitar is a cluster frack when it comes to understanding uh, 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 all this theory stuff. If you really, really, truly want to understand theory, get yourself some form of a keyboard. Uh, best, of course, an acoustic piano, uh, but really try to understand these principles I'm teaching on the keyboard. Once you get that, it stays permanently in your mind. I have a permanent keyboard in my mind. When I'm building really fat chords, I look on the keyboard in my brain. It's easier for me to do that. Okay, so in the case of uh, Little Wing, w just for that moment, if we're not playing G major pentatonic, which I told you is global, you don't have to worry about it, it'll get you through the whole song. Um, you don't have to worry about the F then. But if you're doing diatonic scales, a, a, AKA the modes and, and uh, others as well, but the modes, uh, basically uh, you change your uh, F sharp to an F when that F chord comes up, all right? Another reason why it's important to know the names of the notes on the neck of your guitar. Uh, I think in the future I'm gonna get into specific guitar lessons and I'll teach like visualization techniques for finding the notes on the guitar uh, if I haven't talked about it already. But basically, if you know the natural notes, not sharp or flat, just natural notes, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, if you learn those notes on the low E string and the A string, 
Uh, there's only one other string that you'll need to learn, and that's the B string. If you learn all the notes on, of uh, all the natural notes on the E, A, and B strings, I could show you a technique where you could find all the other notes on the other strings. Really easy. It's basically a visual trick. Okay, so now, um, oh, I forgot to prepare a song for minors. Now let's look at minor modes. Now, um, disclaimer here. Okay. We have two functional minor modes, the Dorian and the Aeolian. And those ones are the ones that will arise in rock and pop and that sort of thing. For example, Carlos Santana was big on Dorian. Uh, 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 the Allman Brothers were big on Dorian. Uh, uh, later in the 60s, Dorian became big. Earlier in the 60s, it was more Mixolydian. All right, so uh, what am I getting to? Oh, minor, mixing minor modes. now. Mixing minors, uh, oh, the disclaimer, right. Yes, we have two minor modes, but as music progressed and temperament arose, the second level of music theory arose along with it, and what they did was they created two more minor modes, they like to call them in uh, classical theory. I like to call them modalities. They are subsets of the Aeolian mode. So, uh, Basically, you have four possible situations here in either Dorian, Aeolian, harmonic minor, or melodic minor. And believe me, I will give you the full scoop on those scales. And once you get all that stuff, there'll come a point by the time you're done with um, the second level, you'll have everything you need to improvise in jazz, given that you study it and learn it on guitar. Okay, now. Um, Uh, hopefully uh, the song isn't so old a reference, but um, this is a song called For You Love. Um, we have A minor, C, D, D minor. Okay? A minor, C, D, D minor. And what's going there, on there, is uh, key of G, believe it or not, and uh, key of C. Same situation once again, except now we're dealing with minors. So let me write down the key of uh, G and C. You know, I'm, I'm kind of hoping, you know, a lot of people are surprised that I'm giving away this theory stuff uh, for nothing. And uh, I think I mentioned, you know, when you get older, you want to give something back to the world. Not that the world gave me a whole hell of a lot, but, you know, you want to give something back to the world. Uh, you know, you want to leave something for the future generations. And there, I have a kind of urgency about this. You know, I just turned 61. I don't know how long I'm going to be here. I have no idea. I mean, I could die tomorrow. I could die in, when I'm 89 years old, which I'd rather not. Uh, all right, so the chord progression we had was A minor, C, D, E. Now, again, if you're wondering, how did I find these two keys? Look, there are only two minor modes you have to discuss. Granted, there is the complication in the future of harmonic and melodic minor uh, keys, but don't worry about that right now. A lot of rock music is purely modal anyway. Um, Anyway, I don't know if you could see this at all, but again, I have the key of C and key of G, and why did I erase the first set? Because it's the same as this set. All right. Anyway, uh, we have A minor, C, D, all arising from the key of G. All right. Then we have a D minor. Well, there's no D minor in the key of G, but ah, there's a D minor in the key of C. So again, in this case, the second step root of a key is called Dorian, and we're keeping the same A minor root because if you notice, the song will end on A minor. Um, therefore, uh, we, when we hit that D minor, no D minor in the key of G, but we do have it in the key of C as the two chord of the key of C. Now that's a passing chord, so don't think of that two chord as being D Dorian. Uh, it, well, in a sense, you could think of it like that, but just for that moment. Um, and again, if you're using A minor pentatonic to jam on this progression, a very common progression, by the way, there are a million songs that use this. 
If you're using A minor pentatonic, no need to worry about the modes. Don't need to worry about that one little mode ch note change. Yes, the same principle uh, is here as well. In the key of C, we have an F. In the key of G, we have an F sharp. And that was my giveaway, by the way, was that F sharp to F. So, all right, uh, you know what? I, uh, I'm not going to be discussing indicators today because this is going to get lengthy. I forgot one more thing. We mix major with major and minor with minor in the modes. But how about mixing major and minor together? Uh, again, a handy example from the Beatles. Somebody on my YouTube channel earlier on, before all this um, flurry of new uh, subscribers came along, uh, he, had, he said to me, uh, a friend of mine told me that... Uh, Norwegian Wood by the Beatles is in the Dorian mode. Um, only half true. Now, uh, we are going to look at, first of all, we have a D drone. And Lennon, in all of his genius, manages to pick out the melody from the D chord. We have to figure out what that is. We have two choices. It's major, so is it Mixolydian or uh, is it Ionian, the just basic key of D major? Just from that melody alone we could find out. Now, I'm not going to use my whiteboard right now. In the key of D, we have D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp. All right? C sharp. All right? Now, so the key of D is that. If I place D as the 5 of some key, that would be the key of G, all right? And uh, we find out in the key, of C, uh, the key of G that we do have a C note in there. So that means we're droning on the D, but we have a C note. So we're from the key of G and rooting on the D chord. Mixolydian, boom, all right? When we get to indicators, you're going to see how quickly you could determine what mode you're in. But now John goes to what's called the special parallel minor in my music theory. In classical, they just call it parallel uh, minor, but in my music theory, I call it special parallel because uh, I'll get to that. Anyway, so now we have... Um to choose from there. What key, I want you to think about this, what key has a D minor, an E minor, and a G? Think about it for a second. All right. Now I have a giveaway because I see the indicator. And again, in the future I'm going to teach you indicators. I know right off the bat. All right. It turns out to be the D Dorian mode from the key of C. All right. Uh, which is interesting because, again, we're dealing with the key of G and the key of C. Both closely related, but see how much richness you could get out of, uh, you know, instead of just playing the major Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do scale, you go with the modes and mix them together. So now we're going major to minor, and we have, we're figuring out which major mode, which minor mode. Uh, the D major is uh, definitely mixolydian because of the C natural note. If it had a C sharp in it, it would sound a little weird. work in a situation, but not this song, all right? So now, I determined that actually we have uh, D minor G, D minor, E minor, A7. Now the A7 I want to put aside for a second. Uh, there's a reason for it, and I'll explain. But uh, D minor to G, that's an indicator right off the bat, but D minor to E minor is a total indicator. Um, in any case, I've established D Dorian there. So for this section, what scale do you play? Do you play a D major scale? Nope. If you played a G major scale, it would sound perfectly fine. Okay? If you played a G major scale, you might be scratching your head saying, well, but G is the root. No, it's not. 
It depends on the chord structure. If, the, if I'm rooting on that D chord, G is no longer the root, so I can play a G scale, but it sounds as Mixolydian, and if you play that scale, you'll notice the resting place is on the D note of that scale. All right, now, uh, for the D minor to G, D minor, E minor, you play a C scale there. Why? Because this is D Dorian we figured out, and D, is, D minor is the second step of the key of C major. So there you play a C major scale. Don't worry, don't be, again, everybody's conditioned. When you hear the key of C major, oh, C must be the root. No, 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 okay? C is not the root. Um, in this case, D minor, the two chord from the key of C, is the root. Now, I said I'm going to put aside the uh, A7, and there's a reason why. Now, this has to do with second level theory. When we see the A7, you could say this, all right? When we're dealing with the Greek modes, the seventh chord is a dead giveaway, all right? I don't know if John wrote a seventh there, but it sounds perfectly fine. If you, He might have done an A major, not an A7. But listen to uh, the A7 and tell me if it's problematic. Um, A7, here's A major. Notice they function exactly the same, and why? Because A7 is the five chord of the key of D, so for that little tiny moment, you're in um, a D major, D Ionian, so we have a third mode coming in. However, when we get into second level theory, remember I said there are actually, for the minors, there are four choices. You can have Dorian, Aeolian, harmonic minor or melodic minor. And it turns out this progression, including the A7, comes directly from the melodic minor scale. D melodic minor contains a D minor, a G, an E minor, and an A7. Lovely sounding scale, is very useful for certain uh, situations, and it's great. Now, how did I know that? Well, when we get to the minor scales, we're gonna be drawing out chord family templates for the minor keys as well. All right, and they have their own uh, little sets of chords because there's one or two, depending on the scale, tweak notes in there from outside the key. So obviously, if you build chords from a scale, when you come to those tweak notes, you're gonna get different chords than you got from the original scale. All right, I think that about wraps it up. Uh, I, I, uh, yeah, I thought I was done with the modes, but yet one more after this, uh, we're gonna do indicators and you'll find that lesson incredibly valuable. If you're getting your mathematics together and all this and you're starting to get the glimmer of how this all works, um, this will be immensely helpful for composition and, uh, and uh, improvisation, it, like when we determine between the F and F sharp and where it happens, say in Little Wing. Now we know when that F chord comes in, I play a C uh, major scale. All right, uh, yeah. Uh, now, as a compositional tool, all right, uh, you can do pretty much anything. You can move from major to minor to major uh, to minor again and have four different modes, okay? So what you would do in those instances if you're a composer is um, you take a chord, let's deal with D. So you take a chord, D major, and you go, okay, what keys can D major exist in? We're eliminating the modes that have no root. Uh, or weak root, I should say. So that means we have either D Ionian or D Mixolydian. Then we do special parallel uh, minor, which is keeping the same root and changing major to minor. Then we'd have a D minor, and we have two choices there, D Dorian and uh, D Aeolian. All right, now what you would do is you'd write out the template for all four of those keys, all right? D major, D, E minor, F sharp minor, G, A, uh, B, uh, C sharp, uh, B minor, C sharp, diminished D. Then the Mixolydian would be from the key of G, so we get uh, uh, a D minor, E minor, F sharp, diminished G, A major, or A7, and uh, B minor. I hope I did that right. I'm doing it off the top of my head. Uh, then you write out the template for the minors, so if D sits at 2, you write out all the chords of C, and if D sits at 6, which is the Aeolian step, you write all the chords out. Now you have like four different keys from which to choose chords that will nicely interact. 
Uh, you do have to be careful. It's not always going to sound wonderful, okay? You, you use a little taste in what you're doing is what I'm saying. Uh, so that's basically it. That's, uh, this is uh, mixing modes. Very important for composers and improvisers. Have a lovely day, and I will see you again shortly. Thank you. Uh, what do they say? Namaste. Okay, bye-bye.